Hey guys, uh, Brinton Kelly here from ACOM Solutions. We're based in uh, North Adelaide, South Australia. And this video is about our Yale Wireless Duress Alarm System. Um, so, as I said, I'm Brenton Kelly. I'm a licensed security professional. And this is one of our products I uh, would like to introduce you to today. Uh, this video is essentially an overview of uh, from receiving the uh, system components, um, how they work, how to put it together in your office or your facility so that it can do what it needs to do for you. Um, so thanks for your time. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to receive updates for this product or other products like it. Uh, so um, by all means, if you need to get in touch with us after watching this video, use our website a-com.com.au and use the contact us page. So without further ado, let's get stuck in. So here is our wireless duress or panic alarm system and uh, we're just going to work through the, uh, an overview of the product uh, and then uh, we'll talk about each of the system components in detail. Um, so but just firstly from an overview perspective this is a by default a local alarm that is we have the ability to let people know locally on the premise or in the premise um, know that there's a situation they need to respond to and it's typically for staff, colleagues or management. Um, so it's not a back-to-base monitored system that is monitored by a external uh, central station, although it can be, but by default it does not have that. It's an upgrade option, so speak to us if you want to know more about that. Um, so obviously uh, there are a few things to consider before you start installing this and we recommend placing it on the bench or desk or whatever and just um, making sure you're familiar with it before you get stuck into um, installing this. There's only one product that needs to be installed as such in terms of fixed back somewhere and that's this one here. But there are a couple of things to be con to consider when you're installing it. Those requirements are power, power for this unit here, uh, network connection for this unit here, the wireless coverage between all of these units, uh, the location of where that's got to go in relation to these other items, and the sound levels that are emanated from both of these two products. So they are the five key things which uh, are determining factors in where everything goes. So um, we recommend uh, certainly doing a bit of a dry run as it were, placing items where you think they should go, doing a test once you're familiar with the system to make sure everything's working and then when it is working you can then certainly fix that back. Why that needs to be fixed back I'll go through in a second. But there's the four main system components. This is the main unit. This is the audio visual alert, so it emits a siren sound and it's got some flashing lights down here. This is the duress or the panic button, and that's the remote for disarming. So in detail, um, as I said, this is the main unit. I'll come back to this one, but this is the duress or the panic button and the main point of interest, I guess, for most people because this is the purpose for which it was purchased. Um, so this is a single press button, you need to press it for two seconds to activate it. It's a wireless device, it communicates back to this main unit and it's got a battery inside it which is accessed by the little screw there um, and it's a CR2032 lithium ion uh, cell. Uh, standard sort of watch battery, very common um, cell. So that needs to be mounted using double sided tape to the reception desk, the reception counter, the meeting room, wherever the um, duress situation may occur. Um, this is the remote and it is its purpose is to hush the system in the event of an alarm. Now when the button is pressed the alarm will go off and the lights will flash, the sirens will sound and they will do so for a minute and then they will automatically shush. But if you want to shush it earlier uh, you would press the disarm button. Now, no other button is actually required on here apart from that disarm button um, because it's not a requirement for this system to be armed for the duress button to work. Okay, It will work regardless of whether that's armed or disarmed because it's a duress button and that's the way it's been commissioned. But if you do want to hush it quite uh, and shush it up um, sooner than the one minute mark, then you would use that disarm button. This has also got a battery. It's accessed by a little round battery hatch there and a five or ten cent piece. Uh, will get you in there, same cell as that one there. Um, this audio visual alert here, 
uh, obviously emits the bulk of the sound to let people know in the office that there's a situation that they need to respond to. It's got four d size cells in there. It communicates wirelessly back to the main panel as well so that it becomes aware of when there's a situation uh, and obviously makes its noise and, and makes the lights flash. Um, it is shipped in the off position. There is a switch internal there which I won't show you in this video but there's a switch inside there it's accessed by just undoing that single screw there then that cover lifts off turn the switch from off to on to activate it this product has got tamper switches which again I won't show you in this video but there's a tamper switch inside there as you lift that lid the, it would go off and there's also a tamper switch when you lift this up off the table uh, or from the wall or from the ceiling wherever you've mounted it would also go off so those tamper switches are the reason why that this product, this component, needs to be fixed and mounted back to something, wherever you think is the most appropriate, a wall, a ceiling, etc. Um, so the siren inside there has been treated to dull off the sound a little bit to make it more suited to an office environment. Uh, so be aware of that. It's not adjustable in audio volume apart from uh, maybe just where you put the thing physically. So consider that uh, when you're determining where to put it. Um, main unit now uh, requires power and a local area network uh, so um, it's also got an onboard battery and the battery is switched on by using uh, again a little screwdriver and turning that little micro switch there from the off position to the on it's shipped in the off position so you need to turn it on when you want to use it but they're the only connections required um, and it's fairly typical for something like this to be placed near your internet infrastructure maybe your communications cabinet or a local switch that might exist in your office environment. Uh, but either way, the location of this is important because these wireless devices are all communicating with it. So then you need to respect the range that they're capable of doing and that of course is building dependent. So back to the wireless, uh, sorry, back to the networking side of things, this is required to have the onboard clock synchronized with the outside world to make sure it stays in time. Um, and also for remote administration should that be required. Um, so there's no specific requirements from your IT perspective. Uh, you just plug it in and it will get issued an address. It's configured as a DHCP product and therefore there's no special uh, networking re requirements for it. Your IT people will love it. Uh, just plug and play pretty much. So um, there's no port forwards, there's no special VPNs, there's no special requirements for this to work it will just synchronize with its clock internally with an external time server it's called so that that event log is realistic uh, the product does have a mac address for your network engineers if they do want to know and that is situated on that sticker just there um, it's got three lights that's pretty much the normal operating green red green or green orange green um, and if you don't have green red green then you've got a problem you need to go back and figure out what may be wrong with your installation. Um, so the operation of the system is very simple. Um, basically press the button for two seconds, you'll see the light come on. It will communicate wirelessly with the main panel. The main panel will communicate with the duress alert here, the AV alert, and put its sirens off and its lights off. This will also emanate some sound out of here as well to let you know there's a situation. And that will do so for a minute and then will automatically hush but if you want to stop it sooner we would push the disarm button on the remote for the purposes of this video I will stop it earlier uh, so that we don't have to sit here for a minute listening to the wailing so here we go we'll press the button and we push the disarm button to disarm the system and to hush it that's pretty much it um, in terms of operation um, the installation side of things can be uh, embarked on now and making sure that you know where that's going to go, where that's going to go, where that's going to go um, because for as, as I said before they just need to communicate wirelessly to each other and you need to respect the wireless range that they have. Um, from a maintenance perspective uh, there's um, and, t and testing, ongoing testing, we believe that this system should be tested monthly um, and that will serve a couple of purposes. Obviously it makes sure it's working, but it also gives the people in the office uh, the opportunity to be aware that it's there, to remind themselves of what they should do in such a situation. 
Um, so it can be considered a bit of a training exercise as well. Um, batteries in, in these two products here should be replaced annually. Sorry, these three products, including this one here, 2CR2032 cells in there and four D size cells in there, and they should be replaced annually, we believe. There is also a rechargeable plug pack in here that will probably last a couple of years, and uh, you can speak to us about getting a replacement pack of batteries for that. That's not something you would expect to buy off the shelf, so let us know when your time comes to replace that. We can ship that out, and you can then install that four screws to undo that and replace that battery pack in there. So that's pretty much it. Um, it's a good little system, and uh, it can be upgraded for more buttons, uh, more remotes, and more AV alerts should you need them. Uh, it can also dial back to base should you need to have police attendance. Uh, but that is an upgrade. You need to speak to us about that if you do want that feature, um, because our base default system does not dial back to base but understand that it can. So speak to us about that. Um, stay in touch, contact us through our website, www.a-com.com.au and use the contact us page. So thanks for watching, I hope you found this video informative.